Abu Dhabi World Championships for Jiu Jitsu. Oh, okay. Uh, Eddie Bravo was over there competing. That was the year that he tapped out Hoyler Gracie. It was the craziest upset ever. Wow. It was insane. Is that insane. What, In Brazil. Is that what blew him up? 100%, man. He wasn't even a black belt yet. Eddie was a brown belt. And he tapped out Hoyce Gracie? Hoyler. Oh, Hoyler Gracie. Hoyler, who was Hoyce's brother, who was more successful even than Hoyce in jiu-jitsu tournaments. He's like one of the greatest Gracies of all time in terms of his, uh, his accomplishments in winning world jiu-jitsu tournaments. I've, he was the man. What did he tap him with? A triangle oh. off his back. It was amazing. It was amazing. When he locked it in, he, he went for an omoplata. Hoyler defended the omoplata and exposed his side. And Eddie had, the, like we were talking about legs that can move like hands. That's Eddie's legs. He has crazy leg dexterity. He can do a lotus position. Like he could just like put himself in a lotus position. Like whoosh, whoosh. BJ Penn can do that too. Really? He doesn't have to use our hands. Like Eddie Bravo can put his legs behind his head. He has crazy flexibility and leg dexterity. It's, uh, it's very surprising. So if you're in his guard, you're fucked. And Hoyler didn't know it. And he was in Eddie's guard, and Eddie just, pop, pop, just slapped that triangle on him and then started pulling the head, and then Hoyler tapped, and it was insane. I was crying. Dude. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't imagine. Shit. I'll cry right now. Did he even know? <sighs> like, did he Did he, he think he, he was going to win? Oh, he won. He, well, he, he had already beat Gustavo Dantes, who was also a world champion. He tapped him before that. That was his first match. He, he got his back and tapped him. And then he had this big match with Hoyler, and they shut off all the other matches and put, like, all the cameras on this one thing. So this footage. Yes. Oh, I want to yes. see it. Yes, you want to see it? Yeah. <clears throat> it's one of the greatest experiences of my life. I, I, I get emotional right now. For, yeah, because I, I can't even imagine. See, that, that's, true. that's real love for your homie. To <sighs> to, for you to get that emotional because he won? It changed his life. Yeah, man. Because I, he was always like this, like super talented guy, and like, you know, I he and I would talk about it. He would talk about all these jujitsu wizards and all these people that were like, like super talented. I go, dude, you're a fucking wizard. I'm like, you're really fucking good, like really good. And he didn't want to kind of believe it for some strange reason. He was very humble about his jujitsu. He knew he was pretty good, and then he started winning tournaments, and he won the Abu Dhabis. And then the, the the West Coast trials, and so he made it to Brazil. And so this is him against Hoyler Gracie, who is the fucking man. And Hoyler's on top of him, right? Now, Hoyler has gotten to side control, but Eddie does this thing called the jailbreak. Look how he retains guard. It's the brilliant use of his legs because, again, he has this insane leg dexterity. So here, Hoyler is defending, oh. and then he catches him. See that? Because Eddie had his wrist and looked like he was trying to set up an omoplata, and then he locks him up in a fucking triangle. And look at him squeezing. Hoyler is fucked. And he's trying to get out here. But Eddie's, this is just death. And then Eddie finally grabs the head. And when he grabs the head with the squeeze, Hoyler's tapping. And that's it. And so Eddie walks up. And this is what he said. He said he couldn't believe it. But he walked around with his arms up in the air like he knew it was going to happen. But while he was walking around, like he... He did a play-by-play -play of it on my podcast. And while he was walking around, he's like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Then Hoyler hugs him, and then he looks at me, and he goes like this. Like, huh. <laughs> so, wow. so it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. Because for him to go there, he was such an underdog, and he had this very strange style of jiu-jitsu that really he formulated. He came up with – there was. it's not like he invented submissions, but he came up with new ways to set things up that were completely unique to him and his system. And that's how he created 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. It's a very well thought out, really effective system, especially if you have leg dexterity. That's me and him. We're hugging. Holy shit, man. Look there, at, he's crying on my shoulders. There are a few things better than watching somebody triumph. It's amazing. God damn. It was crazy, because you couldn't believe it. You couldn't believe it happened. When you're... Uh... I'm pretty spent, man. emotional, physical. Oh, that's him talking about it, yeah, going over it. So that was the birth of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. And then, then he came back, John jock Machado gave him his black belt. John jock took his black belt off. After this match? After that match, and put it on Eddie. Whoa. Yeah. The, God damn! 
Whew, it was wild, man. God it was damn. wild. So then uh, Eddie started 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu shortly afterwards. What, what, does he say that's the, that's the best day of his life? It was one of the best days of his life. One of the best days of my life. It was God amazing. Damn. And then uh, he came back. I think he was going to call it like Sumerian Jiu Jitsu or something like that. I forget because the, the joke was like back then, Eddie and I would smoke a lot of weed. And we would watch documentaries. <laughs> and we would watch, uh, the big one was uh, we were really into Zechariah Sitchin. Zechariah Sitchin was, uh, he was a linguist and a biblical scholar. And he had this belief that if you decoded the Sumerian text, he's like, the Sumerian text in his interpretation described a planet that came in an elliptical orbit every 3,600 years close to Earth, and that this planet was called Nibiru, and that this planet, okay, that this there's year. these creatures on this planet called the Anunnaki, and that human beings were the product of accelerated evolution. So the Anunnaki came down here when we were basically lower primates in the jungle, and they experimented with our DNA and turned us into what we are now. And there's all these uh, depictions of these gigantic beings and one of them has it on his lap is like a human but with a monkey's tail oh. and he believes that that is like pointing to this link and that there's a, a detailed map of the solar system which how the fuck did they know that right six thousand years ago how did they know that but it had the sun in the center and it has all the planets in the correct orbit, like where they are. And they're all like, they're not the exact right size, but, you know, obviously Jupiter's fucking massive and Earth is small in comparison. But the bigger ones are in the right place. Did, did, so, did, so, that's, so that's why he called it 10th Planet. So I came up with 10th Planet. That's my name. Was he pissed? Because I, I was like, Sumerian Jiu-Jitsu, no one's going to know what that means, man. I go, just call it 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Like, this shit is so crazy. It's was, from over there. Was he pissed when, when Pluto got demoted? No, we never counted that. Oh, okay. When when Pluto got demoted, like you says you says you. <laughs> I grew up. It was a fucking planet. <laughs> Fuck you. It's got a name, bitch. That's a planet. <laughs> right. I think the problem is Pluto's so small. I think Pluto is smaller than the moon. Well, which is weird. They, they, oh, by the way, the Sumerians counted the moon as a planet. I believe. Oh, uh, okay. Because they called Nibiru the twelfth planet. Okay. Yeah. I, we came up with 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. It was just Eddie and I getting high, brainstorming names for the academy. 